the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. The, uh, in the wake of Easter, the Mass of the Sunday immediately after Easter uh, speaks of faith. Uh, firstly, the famous passage, or it should be famous passage, from the epistles of the three, from the three epistles of St. James, St. John, uh, concerning faith, and especially the statement that faith is our victory over the world. And then in the Gospel, uh, toward, towards the end of the Gospel of St. John, one of the important uh, visions by the disciples of their beloved Master just executed like a common criminal, but now the risen God, the risen God-man, man and God, true man, true man, true man of true man, true God of true God, our Lord, um, risen from the dead and demonstrating, giving scientific, what we would call today, scientific evidence to the disciples of his, truly, of his true resurrection from the dead. It is an astonishing thing, obviously, and completely unusual for a, a man dead, uh, as dead as mutton, to uh, then rise from the dead. But it's, um, one might say, a common occurrence in the Catholic Church, because our Lord himself rose from the dead, and uh, he the, repeatedly, down all the centuries ever since, the church has witnessed miracles of uh, rising of, of, of human beings uh, alive, then dead, but raised by the church from the, uh, by, by, from the dead by the power of Christ, by the power of God. Um, firstly, the epistle, um, did, whatsoever is born of God, overcomes the world, and this is the victory which overcomes the world, our faith. The biggest difference between human beings is not between whites and blacks, or intelligent and, and, and less intelligent, or tall and short, or man and woman, or Frenchman, or Russian. And none of those differences compare with the difference between human beings that have the faith and human beings that don't have the faith, the Catholic faith. It's the biggest and the deepest difference and the most important difference. And because of the difference between those who are capable of going to heaven and making a success of their life, lives on earth, and those who cannot go to heaven if they, unless they believe by the time they die, and who wreck their existence, and who, for lack of grace, for lack of faith, will be thrown into hell, will throw themselves into hell. It's not God who will throw them into hell, it's they who, having appeared before the judgment seat of God and having been condemned by God, throw themselves into hell in order to get as far away as possible from God because every inch closer to God that they must be, the more they suffer in their damned state, which they have brought upon themselves. It's not God who has made them make the wrong choices in their lives. God, Almighty God did all that he could to make people make the right choices so that they could spend a happy eternity with him in heaven, <coughs> gazing upon his dazzling beauty, which we can't even imagine. It needs, uh, how can you say, um, it needs a, a turbocharger, or the correct word, I don't know, it needs an extra booster on a motor car to get it to go faster than a certain speed. It has, a, it has an intrinsic speed limit, faster it can't go, unless it has this extra charger. Human beings have a certain amount of vision. We have a pair of eyes, God gives us a pair of eyes with which we can see things in this life. But in order to see God, it takes something completely different. It takes an absolute supercharger inside us to be able to see God. Uh, it's called uh, the, well, it's, 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 it's the state of grace, basically, which in, will enable us with its with state of grace, 
we will be able to, with the supernatural state of grace in our souls, we will, after death, be able to see God without that uh, supernatural booster, so to speak. We will not be able to see God. And we can't go to heaven. Therefore, it's worth spending the whole of this life looking to get to heaven. And Catholics are, pe are people who march to a quite different drum from the rest of the world. The rest of the world, disbelieving, is not interested in heaven. It doesn't believe in it. It doesn't believe in the God of heaven, or it doesn't believe in the heaven of God, or it doesn't believe in eternal life. It's, there's a lack, of a lack of faith. But the Catholic who has the gift from God of supernatural faith sees the whole of life quite differently. Life on this earth is nothing but a prelude and the prelude meant to be the prelude to heaven. We are meant to use our free will during this life in such a way that when we die, we, are, we have within us the supercharger to be able to see God. And once we die and have done our necessary time in purgatory, we will go to heaven. We have that certitude and we have the certitude that if we get to heaven, we will never get out of it. The will the reason is quite different. Somebody in hell will not be able to get out of hell. Somebody in heaven will not be able to get out of heaven. But for quite different, two quite different reasons. The one who falls into hell uh, is trapped in hell by his, own, by, by his own sins. His sins during life, this brief life, have deserved that he, he with his sins in this brief life, he has deserved to throw himself into hell because he, he has wanted to defy God, to, to deny God and to defy God. That is the state of the mass of Londoners today. They have, most of them, no inkling of heaven and no desire to have any inkling of heaven, which is extraordinary if you think about it, because that heaven is what they were made for. Heaven. The fact that they are made for heaven gives them a certain dignity, and of that dignity they are aware. Oh, today, the dignity of the human person. That's like saying the dignity of the beer bottle, with no interest in the beer. The beer is the purpose of the bottle. The bottle is cheap, and as moment, moment it's empty, it's trashed. It's just glass, it's nothing. The human, human nature is meant to be the carrier of supernatural grace, just like the bottle is meant to be the bottle of wine or beer, is meant to be the carrier of wine or beer. And the, the glass is worth nothing, or virtually nothing, but it serves a tremendous function in carrying the beer or the wine to the table where it will be, the beer or the wine will be consumed. Similarly, this body during this life is nothing except as a potential carrier of supernatural grace. That life of supernatural, that supernatural life of grace will begin with baptism if the soul is baptized, and hence St. Hence St. John speaks of water. But without that, that supernatural life, the, the human nature, the dignity of the human person is zilch. Well, it, it had, that, it had that huge potential dignity of being a potential, a potential carrier of supernatural grace with which it had the, super, the tremendous dignity of a candidate for heaven, a candidate capable of heaven. But if it loses that grace and if it, if it falls out of the grace of God by its own fault, by mortal sin, then the dignity of the human person is very little, very little. Lenin was a communist who ran Russia uh, in defiance of God, and he once said, uh, God is my personal enemy. Forgive him, Lord, he knew not what, he didn't know what he was saying. And yet it's interesting that when Lenin was visited on approaching death, in his mad state, state of madness, he was in, out of his mind. 
but nevertheless, he recognized his old school friend, I think it was an old school friend, and he welcomed him, and he said to him, which is a moment of truth, which these poor souls have, they have their moments of truth. It's not as though they don't know. And in a moment of truth, Lenin said to him, with a few St. Francis's, with a handful of St. Francis's, we needn't have had the revolution in Russia. This enormous godless revolution, this huge step forward in the fall of mankind towards the Antichrist and towards the end of the world, this huge step forward of the conversion of Russia to communism, of communism taking hold of Russia, and it was all unnecessary had there only been a few saints. Lenin himself said it. Lenin himself saw it, and to his school friend he said it. So, the, the, so these poor souls, it's not that they don't know, they do know. They don't want. It's not that they do not know God. It's not that they have no idea of God, no notion of God. It, it, God is deep down inside them as God is present everywhere in his creation. That's not to say that God is the same as his creation or his creation is the same as God, no. The creation is distinct from God, that is distinct from its creator. But the creator is present everywhere in his creation, everywhere. At the bottom of the oceans, at the top, um, in amongst the most distant galaxies, Almighty God, you know, is, is everywhere. But they, it's not that souls don't know God or have no knowledge of him, but they have no, they have no desire of him. Out of mainly pride, pride is the killer. Watch out for pride. Watch out for your own pride. And um, therefore, uh, he says, um, God, this is the victory which overcomes the world, our faith. It's faith. And without faith, it says St. Paul in the Epistle of the Hebrews, it's impossible to please God. And that's not just any faith. It's not faith in kidology, not faith in my thought, some mythology. Not faith in some nice, lovely feelings. Not faith in chocolate in my breast, which is Protestantism. Sentiment, feeling. Our Lord on the cross, feeling. My God, my God, why hast thou abandoned me? That's Catholicism. Chocolate in the breast is Protestantism. I feel the good. Feelings. No, that's not where the faith is. The, 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 the feelings on the cross of our divine Lord were absolutely horrible. The feeling of abandonment by his own, by his divine father. But of course he wasn't abandoned. Those moments, those terrible moments on the cross is exactly when our divine Lord was redeeming mankind. Redimo in Latin, to buy back. When he was buying back humanity, hopelessly sold by Adam and Eve and all descendants to the devil, so that the devil was the prince of this world, as scripture says. When, uh, when mankind was hopelessly sold, sold off to the devil, under the power of the devil, our Lord was buying him back by his own sufferings. And the more terrible the sufferings were, the more he bought back, so to speak. And that's why our Lord sought to avoid, uh, to avoid not one little bit of his terrible sufferings. This is a completely different drum to which Catholics march. We don't like the cross, we don't like to suffer, but we're in a different category, we're, we are in a different category from the rest of mankind. And it's not something for ourselves to be proud of because the faith is a sheer gift of God. The faith in the truth, in supernatural and natural truth, in the completeness of supernatural and natural truth. That faith is a gift of God. It can only be a gift of God. That's why the man in the gospel says, one you may remember the little the episode where um, the man says to our Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. He realizes that he's, his, his, his faith or belief is somewhat short, but if he wants to increase it, it's to God he must turn. And that's true for all of us. So it's from God that we receive the gift of supernatural faith. It's to God that we must turn if we wish to increase our faith, which is an intelligent thing to do. Because the stronger our faith, 
the better we will resist this poor world, this poor faithless world, which today is extremely pressing. And faith is a virtue because we cooperate with God's gift. It's God who gives the faith to us, but it's we who may, may well be have asked for faith and have wanted this faith. And we wish to keep this faith because we know it's not as the modern world pretends, as the scientific world pretends. It's science, it's dust, just dust. Human reasonings. The great theologian St. Thomas Aquinas wrote a magnificent volume, student's volume of theology, the Summa Theologiae. And yet when he, when he died, he didn't live long enough to finish it. But when he, when he died, he said, it, it's, it's just so much dust. I forget his exact expression, but he, he said, he gave clearly to understand that all of this marvelous reasoning, marvelous use of the, of the human mind with the, with the Catholic faith, uh, that it's still nothing compared with uh, what, what the, the, the full truth, the full mysterious truth is that God contains and that is it's contained in God. St. Thomas Aquinas, all my writings are dust so far, and that was shortly before he died. Well, for us, they're a magnificent, they have been the st a bulwark of the church ever since he died in the, in the, in the latest 1200s. And uh, at the Council of Trent, when the Catholic Church in the 50, 1500s, 300 years later, was pulling itself together in the face of Luther's Protestant revolt, a revolt against practically everything of the Catholic faith and of the Catholic Church. Uh, when the church was pulling itself together, the bishops all met in a little town in the north of Italy, because today Italy, then I think Austria, because it's between the Germanic world and the Latin world, uh, exactly halfway in, in Trent. Um, when the bishops met together there, the Summa Theologiae of Thomas Aquinas was, was opened up on the altar because the, the, the Catholics knew, as Luther also knew, that this work of, of human reason, enlightened by Catholic faith, was this, a huge strength of the Catholic Church. So there's nothing to despise about, about the... Uh, uh, Luther was quite right when he despised reason because God, God created human reason, God created the Catholic faith, all of, the, all of those truths which form the body of the Catholic faith, and the same God produced both, therefore reason fits faith, and faith fits reason. They don't cross, they argue with one, they can't argue with one another. Both come from the same God. But modern world is so stupid, so blind, so proud, and so stupid, that it trusts its science more than it trusts the Catholic faith. Not any faith, but the Catholic faith, which means the faith in the truth, the complete, natural and supernatural truth. Reason can't get to supernature. Supernature is precisely super or above nature. And what is above our nature, we can't command. And faith, hope and charity and the state of grace are all intrinsically supernatural. We cannot command them. We must turn to God to grant us to them and to grant us an increase of them if he wishes. Notice what our Lord said to St. Thomas. St. Thomas wanted the scientific evidence, and he was given it. Our Lord gave it to him. Our Lord knew what a good man Thomas was, how he was completely unhorsed, so to speak, thrown off his horse by the, by, by the crucifixion and the passion, his, his, his crucifixion and passion, which was totally scandalous, totally shocking to him. He couldn't digest it. Our Lord has, had, had spoken during, during his life we see it in the Gospels several times of how he was going to end his life on earth, how it was going to end in the crucifixion by the scribes of Pharisees and so on, 
Uh, Thomas had heard these things, but he hadn't understood them. Like the apostles, the apostles didn't understand. It seemed crazy for the Almighty God, whom they knew Christ to be. It seemed crazy for him to be saying, I'm going to get crucified, nailed to a cross, like a common criminal on a gibbet between two thieves. No, that, you, that shan't happen to you, said St. Peter. St. Peter was lacking faith in what our Lord was saying. Our Lord said, oh yes it is, get thee behind me, Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan, said our Lord. Peter was the voice of Satan at that moment when he refused to believe in what our Lord was saying about his future. Our Lord knew. But it's difficult to believe. It was difficult to believe and they could not believe it. They did not want to believe it. They did not believe it. It's only the resurrection that gave them back their faith. And Thomas is a clear example of that. And so, um, so our Lord says to him, Thomas, you have seen because you wanted scientific evidence and I've given it to you. You've just put your hands in my, your, your fingers in my hands, the, the hole in my hands, and the, the hole in my, the, my side. You just put your finger there and because of that, seeing is believing and because you saw, you believed. Good, says, says, says our Divine Lord. But still better, those who believe without seeing. I don't think probably many of us here have actually seen a miracle right under their eyes, a supernatural miracle right under their eyes. They do happen, they do get seen, there are people that see them. Almighty God judges when and where it's best to provide a miracle and when and where it's often best not to provide a miracle because it will simply increase the damnation of whoever refuses the miracle right under their eyes. And there are, there are sinners who refuse the miracle right under their eyes. Uh, St. Francis Borgia, the third general of the Jesuits, was once looking after a soul that was about to die. And he begged the soul to repent. And he, he offered the, the crucifix to the soul. And the crucifix began to bleed. The crucifix actually began to bleed right in front of the eyes of the dying man. And still he would not believe. There is an element of the mind. The, the faith is actually in the mind. But it's in the mind pushed by the will or not pushed by the will. The, the, the miracle can be in the mind and the, the, the will can push against that. Uh, in the Psalms it says, they did not want to believe, they, uh, they did not want to in understand. Intellectual, no, not aware, not aware of intellectual. They did not want to understand. And that's the tragic case of millions and millions and millions of souls in London and in England. And the, the world, these faith, the world that these faithless souls have created, bears in upon us. It, 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 it's all around us. It seeps into us. It's carried. The faithlessness is carried by so many human beings who are comrades, friends, and fellow workers of ours, for instance. And we cannot avoid it. And it's there all around. And the faith is weakening all the time. Uh, amongst those amongst those who believe, but you'll be interested to hear that there are now taking place or have just taken place since the month of February in uh, a little Catholic community in Texas in the south of the United States, close to the Mexican border. It's called the Mission of Divine Mercy, and their messages have been received recently. Uh, February, March, uh, by um, a, a laywoman or a sister, a sister of this little community. And it is supposedly Our Lady, Our Lord, and Almighty, Almighty God Himself, God the Father, God the Father and God the Son speaking. <coughs> and uh, our, our Lady is, as so often over the last, let's say, 200 years since the French Revolution. Our Lady is, as a mother, absolutely concerned for so many of her children who are not in a state to save their souls, in a position to save their souls. 
and she she introduces a series of messages, and then Almighty, or her, she presents her son. She introduces her son like God has wanted that, that she do, because she is a mother so concerned for her children, and because she is only quote unquote only a woman. Ha! Ah, the queen of creation, the queen of the universe, only a woman. Yes, only a woman. But what a woman! And she is a mother, and the spiritual mother of all of us, from her standing by the cross, faithful under the cross, under the terrible suffering of seeing her sinless son, her innocent son, tortured to pieces, racked and tortured. Uh, she stood there, and one, one, one may wonder if without her there, our Lord would have been able to endure the, the cross. That's a speculation. In any case, she introduces these messages and she says, children, prepare for battle. And battle, battle is here. This is, the, this is the moment. This is the time. The, the messages seem to me entirely persuasive. I can obviously be wrong. But uh, it seems to me exactly what the state, the condition is. The, um, the politicians are playing with the idea of nuclear war, and it will take it will take something like at least nuclear war in order to shake mankind out of its sinfulness of today and bring put, bring it back or bring any large number of souls back on track for heaven. Our lady said, "Fire will fall from heaven." and will eliminate a large part of mankind. This is a prophecy she made in 1973 in Japan. And will eliminate a large part of mankind, the good as well as the bad, the priests, uh, not sparing the priests or the laity, or the Catholic laity. Um, at that moment, there will be two weapons that will, that will serve you. One, the rosary. The rosary. She always comes back to the rosary. The rosary has a special power and a special role to, part to play in today's situation. It's easy of access. Anybody can pray it. You don't have to be a great Catholic, a great theologian. You, you, you can just be a poor, simple soul lost in the cosmos. But if you grab, grab hold of and hang on to and pray the rosary, heaven will look after you. And one can say that surely for, for non-Catholics as well. Mother, the Mother of God will look after them if they look after her great prayer of the Rosary. And then the other thing she says, the sign left by my son, which is a little mysterious, but we don't know what that sign is. And she said the suffering will be so great that the, those who die uh, in what's coming will, I'm sorry, those who survive the chastisement will envy the dead. And another prophecy speaks of those who survive, looking around in the ruins to find other people that have survived as well. Mankind is, is due for the most tremendous shaking and is fully deserved it. And afterwards, the world will be back in order. And one prophecy says, for instance, I may well have quoted it before, Russia, England and China will all convert. That's three tough nuts to crack. Uh, especially England, you and I know what England is like. There's not much Catholic faith in England today. Our faith is our victory over the world. England is being absolutely conquered and trampled upon by the, by the world. And Ireland is sending out invitations to people in distant and strange lands to come and live in Ireland, inviting foreigners to take over Ireland, which is what's happening. Catholic Ireland is disappearing. The faith is losing, losing, losing. But b believe me, the, the, these messages in Texas, when God the Father speaks, he is not scared of the modern world. And he is going to trounce it. And he says so. And it will be, he says, for the great relief of, of the poor Catholics who have so long been suffering, and who've been wondering, what is God doing? Where is God in this? How can I still believe in God? And God the Father said, don't worry, you're right. 
And the, the, the poor priest, he is very sharp, harsh. When God the Father speaks of these messages, he's very harsh into a pack of lies. But he's very consoling for those priests who have stayed faithful. And they are the joy of his heart, he says. Therefore, my dear friends, uh, keep the faith in these difficult days. And if you want to increase and strengthen your faith, turn to God. Turn to God especially through his mother and pray the rosary for an increase of faith, hope and charity and an increase in a strengthening of your state of grace. If you persevere, he that perseveres to the end will be saved, says our divine Lord. So all you need do, and you are shooting for heaven, make no mistake, you're shooting for nothing less. You're not, you do not have any substantial earthly ambitions. Or if you've got a grain of sense and if you've got the grain of the Catholic faith, you're not shooting for any earthly ambitions. Although you may achieve this, that and the other when you're a Catholic amongst a bunch of non-Catholics because you have got a light and a good sense and an intelligence, a supernatural light which they do not have. Just like the Jews are the kings of Hollywood because they had 2,000 years of close familiarity with Almighty God and that's it, some of it has stayed and stayed with them down another 2,000 years ever since uh, the incarnation of our Lord. From Abraham through to today, 4,000 years. They've, they've had from God such a richness, such a wealth of formation in the Old Testament that it's, some of it stayed with them and they, can, they, they know human nature. They make fine musicians, they make fine comedians, they, etc. Um, they have, they have ex, um, exceptional gifts and that's why they, they can make films which everybody likes and which, uh, which are, therefore they are the kings of Hollywood and they are the kings in many departments. Alas, they are for the, for the moment still as a, as a whole defying and denying the one true God, Jesus Christ, whom many of them hate and with a passion, uh, but they will convert collectively as a whole, as a body, before the end of the world. And that's also, that's the promise of God, it's in scripture. Therefore, my dear friends, about the Catholics at the end of the world are going to be heavily persecuted. It will be the most terrible persecution under the Antichrist will be the most terrible persecution ever. Courage, have courage, have faith. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet have believed, says our Lord in today's Gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen.